This is genetics not a problem and today's not a problem is probability. We're going to talk about the product rule, the sum rule, and how to use these in the context of monohybrid and multi-gene crosses. A woman with albinism and a carrier marry and have children. So within this question they tell you a lot even though they don't tell you whether it's autosomal and they don't tell you whether it's dominant or recessive. But this word carrier is going to tell you a lot about that. So um, if, if she's marrying a carrier, it can't be X-linked because men can't be carriers of X-linked mutations because they only have one X. Uh, a carrier, by definition, is the, uh, the heterozygote for a recessive trait. So uh, just by using the word carrier, we know that if she's got albinism, she's got to be homozygous recessive. And if she's married a carrier then he is heterozygous. So we're going to call little a um, the, the disease state, and that's going to be recessive to um, the normal non-albinism. Uh, what fraction of their children are expected to have albinism? So this one is pretty easy because um, from, from their dad, they can either get the, the big A or they can get the little a, but from mom, there's only one thing that they can get. And so that leaves you with 50% of the kids um, getting albinism and so that's the that's the answer if you prefer to set up a Punnett square you can do that as well you can put his um, gametes on the top um, and you don't really need to put two different things for her you can just put that one a because there's really only one thing that she can give and so your Punnett square would look more like a Punnett rectangle and you'd see again you'd you'd get that 50% answer here's one now using a dominant trait so Whenever you have an individual um, with a dominant disorder, they could potentially have either two of the um, dominant allele or they could be heterozygous. Okay, you just don't know um, given their phenotype because because it's a dominant allele. Um, so the way that we get around this when we ask you genetics questions is we uh, we sometimes tell you that it's a very rare. Uh, trait or very rare allele in the population and when you see that you can assume that the chances of them getting um, a bad allele from both parents is actually pretty low so what we're going to do is we're going to say this man and this woman with polydactyly are each heterozygous okay um, but since we've already told you that it's really rare um, what I need to tell you is in order for them to have a child together they've maybe met at some sort of polydactyly support group um, and so uh, if they do meet and they eventually have a child together, then this just comes down to a simple um, monohybrid ratio of three to one. And so if you were to set up your um, Punnett square, your big P and your little P down there, then what you'd see is that three quarters of the offspring have at least one P. So this group, that group, and that group. Right. These are the only guys that, that don't have any of the, that dominant allele. And so uh, uh, what is the probability that their child will have extra digits? And the answer is uh, 3 quarters or 75%. Now, the next one asks, if a couple were to have three children, what is the probability that two of them and only two will be girls? Um, and this is trying to get at whether you know how to use the product and the sum rule. Okay, so... The sum rule uh, tells us about um, when multiple things could happen to give you the same outcome. So for example, in this case, there's three ways for them to have only two girls. If you have three kids, you could have girl, girl, boy. You could have boy, girl, girl. Or you could have girl, boy, girl. Okay. Now the product rule is going to tell you that the chance of this happening is one half times one half times one half. Okay, so we know we know that each of those events is a 50-50. So that product rule is now going to give us one eighth. The product rule here is going to give us one eighth. And lastly the product rule here is going to give us one eighth. Now this is when you're supposed to know to use the sum rule because I've asked you what's the chances that any of these things could happen? And so you just simply add those up and the answer is three out of eight. In this question, you're asked uh, if two carriers of sickle cell anemia marry. So remember, a, a carrier is a heterozygote for a recessive disorder. And so let's call the sickle cell allele um, 
little s, and we say it's recessive to um, the normal allele, and I like to use a plus just for, for normal. Um, they marry and they have two healthy children. What is the probability that neither of these children is a carrier? So what I'm trying to get at here is understanding um, whether you know how to use conditional probability. So the condition that you've been given is that their children are healthy. Okay, so first let's just apply normal Mendelian genetics. You've got two carriers marrying, so you've got a heterozygote, those are the two gametes that they can make, another heterozygote, those are the two gametes they can make. You fill in your Punnett square, mm -hmm. plus S. and then what you're told is that they have healthy children. So that means there's no way that the children can have that genotype. Okay, so there's three things left that the child could be, but you don't know which one they are. Okay, all you know is that they're healthy. So what is the chances that that this child is not a carrier? It's one out of three. Okay, so it's one out of three that the child is not a carrier. And so if you're going to then ask what's the probability that neither of these children is a carrier, you're just asking for that event to happen twice. So it's going to be one-third times one-third, and the product rule will give you one in nine. Now this question asks, in a cross between parents of this very complex looking genotype and this other complex looking genotype, what fraction of the offspring will be homozygous recessive at all of those uh, loci? Um, and this one is actually a lot easier than it looks uh, and is trying to um, understand whether you can use the product rule in the context of, of a multi-gene cross. Um, and so if you, if you know the product rule, this is actually pretty, pretty simple. Um, but you also, of course, have to be pretty quick with your Mendelian monohybrid ratios. Okay, so if you just look at this A gene here, right, the chances of that individual, of the child having, um, being homozygous recessive is a quarter. Okay, so, so it's a quarter at the A, okay, for AA. Um, then let's look at the B, a heterozygote times a homozygote now. You should know that that's going to be a half that are going to be little b, little b. And again, if these things are not coming quickly, you just need to brush up on those monohybrid um, flashcards and stuff. Um, here again, it's a heterozygote times a homozygote. So at the C locus, it's going to be a half. Um, at the D, it's a homozygote times a homozygote. So that's going to be like multiplying it by one, so, or, or all of them. And then lastly, you have the het times the het. And you should know that that's going to give you a quarter um, with the little e. That in there. So now the product rule, you simply um, multiply those all together, and that should give you 1 in 64. And this is the last question. Uh, in a cross between parents um, that are that are triply heterozygote, heterozygous there, and triply heterozygous there, what fraction of the offspring will be homozygous at all three loci? Um, and this um, now, now, in the question, it, it assumes that you understand that there's two ways to be homozygous, right? You can be hom homozygous dominant, or you could be homozygous recessive. And so this requires you to use the sum rule and the multi-gene uh, product rule. So by that, what I mean is that at locus A, you could be um, that or that, and you would fulfill the homozygous requirement. Um, and you know that this is going to be a quarter and this is going to be a quarter. Okay, so the chances that it's homozygous at the A locus is you use the sum rule because it could be either of those things, and you get a half. All right, and then basically you have to repeat that for the other two loci, and it's the same thing, right? It's, if you look look through the the genotypes, you can see that at the B it's also going to be a half, and at the C it's also going to be a half. Okay, so then you're going to use the product rule to ask. What's the probability of all of those things happening at the same time? And you're going to come up with the answer of 1 in 8.